All right, guys. Welcome back. Why did I clap? All right, guys. Welcome back to Dungeons and Dry Brushing. My name's Daniel. Today we're going to be working on a crafting project. What we're going to be doing today is building a roadside shrine. Now, in my homebrew setting... Oh my god, he's going to talk about his homebrew campaign. All right, all right. Just let me explain. In the part of my world that my next campaign takes place in, people worship spirits instead of gods. Now, these spirits can be of anything. They can be of giant concepts like love, war, revenge, or they can be of tiny things, um, like a particular river. One popular one is spirits of travel. This can be spirits of the entire idea of travel over the entire continent, or they can be, say, small guardian spirits of a particular road. That's not uncommon for people to raise shrines to these spirits and to leave offerings if they're going somewhere. And that's what we're working on today, building up a couple of these shrines so that we I have some scatter to put on the table when players are traveling from place to place. Let's get started. I'm going to be starting my shrine with an old container of loose leaf tea and some kind of discount card that was in my junk mail. What do you know, they're, they're finally good for something. Of course, anytime you're using something that's really smooth like this tea container, you're going to want to add some texture. In this case, I'm using sanded grout. Now, this isn't the pre-mixed kind, so I'm just going to cover the tea container in white glue and dip it into the grout. It's a bit messy, but it does end up being really solid, and it gives a great stone texture when it's dry. Once it's completely covered, I spray the entire base with water to activate the grout. That's going to take some time to dry and harden, so I'll end up leaving that overnight. For the statues on the shrine, I have these three 3D printed miniatures that I started to paint a very long time ago before deciding they were printed just a little too big, a little too out of scale for me to comfortably use. But I held on to them, and today they get turned into scatter terrain. We start that process with an all-over coat of bronze from Monument Hobbies. Now this does tie back into something I've mentioned before, about painting and crafting with a story in mind. I like to imagine that the three soldiers this statue was made in the image of weren't heroes. They were just regular soldiers who, perhaps during a raid by goblins or orcs, they gave their lives in an impossible situation, defending the road so that innocent civilians could escape. Now, the locals fancy them as spirits of travel protecting the road even in death. So they come here, both rich and poor, to make offerings, to show respect, and to ask for safe passage. My next step is going to be a dry brush of light bronze, also from Monument. Their metallic paints are some of the best out there, in my opinion. These statues have been outside for a while, and I do want them to look weathered, and like tra passing travelers have put their hands on them as a sign of respect or in prayer. So I used a pretty heavy hand with the dry brushing. My next weathering step is going to be some verdigris. Now personally, I like the verdigris effects paint from Vallejo, but I know that GM's Nihilic Oxide is a popular choice too, and if you don't have either, you can absolutely just water down some teal and a little green until you're happy with the color. I apply this pretty liberally, anywhere that, goes, that it goes on too thickly, or in a place I don't like, I just brush it off with my thumb. You can add however much or a little pleases your own sense of aesthetic. With the statues themselves done, I went through my bits box and picked out a few items and beads I thought would make interesting offerings. These all get primed and left to dry while I move on to the base. For the base, I cut the card into a random shape and then just bust out some texture paste. I really like the AK texture paste and I think they're great value for the cost. But if you don't have them, then this is absolutely the right time to get out some sand or dirt and white glue. Just make sure to bake the sand first. And yep, I'm absolutely just spreading the texture paste on with my fingers like a barbarian. For flat surfaces, it's, it's just the easiest way to do it. If you find you need to smooth it out at all, you can just get your finger wet with some water and smooth it over the paste. This will need to be left overnight to dry though, just like the grout. Okay, so this is day two. The grout and the paste are dry and the offerings and statue plinth are primed. The beads get glued together to make a decorative vase, and everything is just getting really simple paint jobs. Some dry brushing, some washes, and a bit of contrast paint. 
Of course, in the story we're telling, it isn't only the wealthy and adventurers that make offerings. Not everyone can drop off decorative pottery or well-used weapons. So we're going to take that basket and add some flower tufts and make a nice basket of flowers that some common folk have left as a more humble offering to the road spirit. Finally, the plinth itself is going to get a coat of skeleton hoard contrast paint to really bring out the simple but effective stone texture that the grout gave it. Then all that's left is putting it together, placing the statues on top of the plinth, the plinth on top of the base, and scattering the offerings around it. As a last touch, I decided to add some light pigment powder to add to the deserty, sandy, and dry feeling that I'm going for, and to give everything a little more weathering. But that last step brings us to our finished piece. Alright guys, that about does it for this project. You know, the statues are about as simple as they come on this one, but I really think that the extra details, the offerings left by them, they add a lot to the piece, uh, visually and otherwise, that elevates it, brings it up a little bit. Uh, if I were going to do it again, and I am, because I'm going to need more than one of these, uh, I would use something different for the base. That card that I used, it was more like a thick paper than a plastic, and it did bend a little with the texture paste. It's not the end of the world, but I would change it next time. And if you're going to do something like this, I definitely recommend you know using a plastic card for it or something else, even like an old CD that you don't use anymore, or blank CDs, that kind of thing. Those can all make great bases for this kind of small project. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more of these small craft projects like this, or if you'd rather I stick more to mini painting with larger crafts, just let me know. Uh, please subscribe if you aren't subscribed, and I'll see you on the next one.